When I was still a practicing financial planner, I used to drool about having a piece of software that would allow me to sync up all of my client accounts into one convenient place. And then after years of asking and begging, there was a company that finally created this software. And I was happy to pay, it was like $500 a month to have this software that I could offer all of my clients. And then something crazy happened. I mean, this was so crazy. This blew my mind that there was a company that created the exact type of software that I was drooling over. But instead of paying $500 a month, I and anybody else could have it for free. That piece of software is called Personal Capital. It has been around for many years and it is still my go-to place for anybody that wants to understand all the investments that they have, what do they own, are they really working together, and if they are truly helping you achieve your financial goals. We're gonna find out about personal capital and a whole lot more, let's go. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Good Financial Sense. I am your host, Jeff Rose. And yes, I was a financial planner for 16 years. Still am a certified financial planner. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. But personal capital. I mean, when this company first came out, like literally I was blown away. I was so excited, so pumped. Because like I said, I had, had signed up for this other company that was catered more towards financial advisors. And I was happily paying, like I think it was $500. It could have been more. I was paying per month so that all my clients could aggregate all of their different investment accounts all in one place. Like to have one place that they could log in, that we all could log in and see everything working together. Now, if you have one investment account or even like two investment accounts, this might not be a big deal for you. But for those that have a individual account or a joint account, Maybe you also have a 401k. You have a traditional or a Roth IRA. Maybe you have an old 401k. Now, then you have kids and you start having kids savings accounts or 529 college savings plans and your spouse has 401ks. Now you start to understand when you have all these different accounts, like even the different investment apps, like if you're investing with Robinhood and Acorn or Stash and you have all these different investment accounts, oh, I can go to my phone, I can see all of them. It's like, that's great, like that's super convenient. But to actually see all of those different investment accounts in one central dashboard, like prior to personal capital, like this just did not exist. And for many of my clients, the way that they, <laughs> literally the way that they were able to see everything that they had in one place was to bring in all of their financial statements, all their paper statements, and then we had to plug that in into our financial planning software. And that was the only way that we could see it. So the fact that you can just easily sync all that into one place and not just see it all, but actually get some really good data that helps you understand what you have, what you're paying, how it's performing, how it compares to other indexes out there. And the fact that it is free on top of it, like that is just crazy. Nice. All right, first things first, for anybody that wants written form of everything I'm covering in this video, you can head on over to the blog, Good Financial Sense, and we have our personal capital review there. Discusses all the feature benefits, everything that you need to know about personal capital. If you're also interested in signing up for your free account, you can sign up there on the blog post or you can click on the description. I have a link in the description. You can sign up for your free personal capital account. I mean, once again, it is free. Like I cannot stress that enough. It is free. Is there a trade-off? Yes, there is. And I'll explain that here in one sec. Okay. So the purpose of this video is doing the personal capital review. So I want to help you understand who personal capital is, how they offer this amazing free tool. How do they get paid? Some of the annoying nuances about their company, about their practices, also their app. And then I'm going to show you how I log into one of my personal capital accounts so you can see when I log in, because it's been a minute since I've logged in, so you can see what happens when you log in, how you sync up all your accounts, and show you just the amazing tools and dashboard that they have to offer. Okay, so a little bit about personal capital. So personal capital, if you want to think of them kind of like the Spotify 
of financial planning. And what I mean by that is that they went with the whole freemium model, you know, where they create this amazing tool, this amazing resource. They offer it for free, get you to sign up, and then after they kind of woo you a little bit, show you some cool things, try to entice you to become a client, a paying customer. And this is a model that you see everywhere in the tech space. You know, Spotify comes to mind. Personal capital is just another version of them. So a little bit about their size. I mean, this is some of the tools that they offer, but check this out, right? So they have 3.2 million users that are using their tool. They currently have $22 billion under management. This is how they are getting paid, which we'll talk about here in a sec. Now, some of this size has to do with a acquisition that happened to them a couple of years ago. So they actually were bought out by a company called Empower, Empower Retirement. Now, prior to Empower buying out personal capital, I didn't know anything about them. Looks like they are, a, they are the nation's second largest retirement services provider, which basically means that they offer like 401k custodial type services, helping businesses set up their 401k plans and also administer or manage the assets. That's a, a huge market. But with, I'm assuming, with personal capital, Empower saw an opportunity. They just had amazing software that I'm assuming Empower didn't have. And then also seeing the size that personal capital was. So if Empower is looking to grow and they can see that personal capital has added 2.5 million users on its platform, tracking over 771 billion of household assets, I mean, that is very intriguing. Now, you have to keep in mind, though, like just because you have your accounts on personal capital's platform doesn't mean that personal capital is making money, just like with Spotify, right? If if you are a free Spotify account owner or customer, like Spotify likes you kind of, but when you're not paying, like eventually they, they want you to pay. That's the whole point. But when you start using Spotify and you start seeing heck, how awesome it is that you can create all these different playlists and 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 follow different people that have their, their playlist set up and just the easy use of the music. I mean, that is with personal capital. So they had just this amazing financial planning tool that they were offering for free. And then once they get you in, uh, then you start learning about the other services that they offer. And in this type of model, you know, coming from the financial service industry, really the only way that you can make money is they got to sell you something. Uh, they're not looking to sell you like stocks and mutual funds and earn a commission. What they're trying to sell you is wealth management or investment services. And these are just some of the tiers that you can see. So they have if you, the investment services, $100,000, $200,000 in assets. You got wealth management, $200,000 to $1 million, or a private client over $1 million. And if you start to look at the fee structure, now you start seeing this is how much they or you would pay. So if you had your first 1 million, you're paying 0.89%. That is a annual fee that you are paying. So it's recurring. And then you have the private client. So basically what personal capital, like their, their main goal was trying to find people that had at least $100,000 in assets. Like that was kind of their initial target. I don't know if that has changed. I have to assume that's about their target. They're trying to charge you 0.89%. Now, for those that are familiar with Betterment and Robinhood, like you know, Robinhood, you don't have to pay any uh, any cost technically for you know buying stocks, buying ETFs. Obviously, there's no investment management services. You're not not talking to a live person, and even with Betterment, you're you're paying a fraction, maybe like a fourth of what personal capital is charging. So there has to be some sort of value add uh, for them to offer that much more, and that kind of goes back to the different off offerings here, you know, looking at the wealth management, and you can see some of the different uh, things here. Two dedicated financial advisors. Ooh, you know, you only get one, you get two. Specialists in real estate, stock options, and more. A customized portfolio with regular reviews, tax optimization, thanks to individual stock investments, yada, yada, yada. You can compare the plans all there. So as you can see, like there is a more tailored approach, more, uh, it's not just generic. I mean, you're actually talking to somebody that's going to know your situation and really no different than working with a financial planner one-on-one, -on -one, or in this case, one-on-two, if you qualify for their wealth management services.
So after you sign up for your free account, like if there's one thing that is annoying, and it's really not that annoying, is that you will get a phone call from a personal capital rep. I think on average, I'm going to say every three to six months. Like it's not every day. It's not every week. But it never fails. Like I'll get a phone call and, you know, I've got my phone where I know I know who they are. I think generally it is a Northern California number, I believe. I don't know if that's changed since last time I checked, but I know for the longest time I always knew if I was getting a phone call from Northern California, it was personal capital and I did not choose to answer that. That's the only annoying thing, right? But that's once again, you are getting this amazing free tool, this free resource that gives you so much information like that I was happily paying hundreds of dollars for. So to get that free tool and the only price that you have to pay is an annoying phone call, you know, every three to six months, like it's really not that big a deal, especially since you're not even, you're not obligated to even answer it. Just have it go to voicemail and they won't kick you out. Like I've still had my personal capital account for years, still get the calls. I've never spoke to anybody and I still get the benefit of the free tool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into one of my personal capital accounts. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I do have more than one account. Initially, I had set one account up, uh, personal use, other one was for my Grow Your Dough Throwdown. So I was trying to track like six or seven different investment accounts in that one. But uh, here, so you, this, is, this is the dashboard. Here's when you first log in. If you already have accounts synced, you'll see these on the left here. And anytime, if you have not logged in for a while, you'll see these uh, little red dots come up. This is basically just saying, hey, we're not pulling data from here. Uh, you need to re-verify your account. This could be uh, the going back to say, Lending Club, I've already closed that account so if they're not doing notes anymore, we'll cancel. But let's say like TD Ameritrade, uh, from there, you could, let's see what happens. So you refresh account. So it's going to know the email password. You may have to get some sort of security code, like an SMS text to your phone to re-verify. There are a few outfits that can be a bit of a nuance trying to get them to sync up. But for the most part, they're really easy. What I've kind of learned, like the less old school that they are, the easier it is to work with new tech like personal capital. So that's just what I've kind of learned in my own journey. Uh, so from here, you got everything synced up. And then as you'll see, like I've not really utilized. So they have this a budgeting option that you can do. Um, I'm gonna, I will play with this because I'm kind of curious to see how this compares to Mint. That will be a future video I'll be re recording. Uh, you can do cash flow. You can set this up, like what cash flow do you have coming in, compare that to how much you have, uh, you know, how much you're spending, how much is going out. So you can do everything here, right? Cash flow, income, expenses, like as much detail as you want to provide, that can all go here. But for me, like what I got really excited about when, you know, for my clients and for me in particular, like, you know, if you want a net worth, here it is. Like it shows your net worth. Like if you want to include other assets. So they have this little category here. I'll make sure you can see it. You can. So if you go to other assets, if I wanted to add, like here's a mortgage. So you want to link up your mortgage here. You can do that to show how much equity you have. If there's any loans. This is where all the expenses are coming from, like your credit, all your different uh, credit cards, anything that you owe there all the different investments. But let's say that you don't wanna like link up your mortgage or there's an issue with that, you can always just set up a manual investment. Uh, so this is just one like you could set up like just a, a manual value and it will track it there. It won't track if it's moving up and down, but you can manually add if there is some sort of asset. This could be a collectibles, like any sort of collection that you have. Uh, it could be some sort of private investment. If you want to put that in there, you can. That's, you know, all that is there. Uh, I'm just going to click on a random account here. Let's click on Robin. Nope. Yeah, Robinhood needs to be ver verified. 
And I was kind of curious to see, it looks like all mine, all this probably needs to be verified. That's why it's not tracking properly, which is that a big deal? Eh, I mean, it can't be annoying, but it's, it, it is more for security purposes, you know, not staying logged in. Speaking of security, let's, let's talk a little bit about that so that we understand what the risk is here, syncing all of your investment accounts in one place. And this is what I explained to my clients so that it made sense. When you input your information at a place like personal capital, it is not storing your data. So it's not storing your username. It's not storing your password. It's not storing any sort of personal information. This is the whole dashboard is just for viewing purposes only. And why is that a big deal? Why is that important? Well, if somebody were to able, like say, hack your personal capital account, let's just say that for example, if they could log into your account, they wouldn't be able to pull your usernames. They would not be able to pull your passwords. And even more importantly, they wouldn't be able to log in into your investment accounts and buy or sell anything. They wouldn't be able to transfer any funds out and send it to them. So when people, if somebody had access to your personal capital account, they can just see everything. Like you cannot buy or sell anything here that is held somewhere else else, if that makes sense. So that, that's how I always kind of help wrap my head around it, and help other people wrap their head around it so that there is nothing stored here. And it's all encrypted, you know, has all the security features that you would need, but also have the peace of mind knowing that nobody can log into your personal capital account and then take all your money and leave you broke. All right, so let's go back to the personal capital dashboard and see the part that I get really excited about. And there's all these different tools, but when we start getting into the investing side, like this is where it gets fun. Now, the one thing here, so like you start seeing, you have all of your holdings. And if you want to select individual accounts, as long as they are synced up properly, you can select those on the left-hand side and that, all that information will show here. Now, since I am not logged into all my different accounts, a lot of these holdings won't show up. At least you get a sense of, you can see some of the stock I own. I got five shares in one of my accounts. Uh, I've also got some ETFs, got the Vanguard ETF here. There's VTI down here, a some sort of Asperian flagship fund. I'm curious where all this is located. I, mean, I don't even know where all this is. I need to find all this out. So you can just start seeing all the different stocks that you own, your holdings. You've got your balances, and then you've got your performance. And the performance to me is like, this is lights out. Now, if there is one, uh, how do I say this? Not like a, a downside, but typically with personal capital, if there's an issue, especially when it comes to performance, it, I believe it only tracks as long as you've had your accounts sync with them. I don't know if it can go back and get historical data. It can, so basically, the longer you have your account synced with them, the more data that you're going to get. But to be able to show performance of your portfolio, once again, I'm not talking about your account because oftentimes if you have an investment account, you, you can get your performance data for that account. But to get your performance out of all your entire portfolio, all of your accounts together, I mean, it gives you such an amazing view and and look at how you are truly doing as opposed to like how you think you're doing, how you, oh yeah, I think I'm good. I'm, I'm up. I'm okay. <laughs> and they will go back. You can select the time frame. You want to go back one year. Boom. You can go back one year. You can go back uh, last year. And I think you could also do a custom, but then it's also going to show you how is your portfolio doing compared to the U S stock market, foreign stocks, U S bonds, a blended, I mean, it just gives you all this data. Like this is, I mean, this is what financial advisors drool over. I'm telling you. Uh, then if you want to look at your portfolio as far as asset allocation, you know, how much do you have in cash, percentage wise, U.S. bonds, uh, stocks, alternatives, and uh, unclassified, different sectors. Huh. I mean, it just gives you all this amazing data that is is helpful. And you're probably wondering, well, how is, is this helpful? I mean, just to give you, I'll give you one good example. So for somebody that says, "Hey, I am I am a, I am super aggressive. I don't care if all of my money is invested into the stock market." And I have seen this. I've had people come in telling me how aggressive they are 
uh, that they, you know, they want to make sure that they're putting all of their money as as aggressively invested as they can. And then we put everything into you know, our little software program. And then we can see using like personal capital or the tool that I was using that they're actually not invested 100% in the stock market. They're actually invested like 10%, maybe 15% into bonds. And they had no idea. They, they just thought, oh, yeah, like I'm aggressive. But what they didn't realize was that their 401k had some cash holdings or had some bond holdings or some other account that they didn't realize had some bond holdings because you're getting all these different financial statements from all these different places. Like it's hard to keep track of this stuff. But having a aggregation software like this, bam, you can easily see how you are truly invested and even better how you are performing to get that performance data. I mean, that is just, that's lights out. All right, so just to wrap up on some of the other features here, and these are the ones I've not taken advantage of, but as you can see, like if this is something of interest of you, you know, on the planning side, they have a retirement planner that you can start going through when you want to retire, what are your goals? They have a savings planner that you can set up. And if you have you know, your emergency fund, if you want debt, uh, debt pay down, I mean, whatever your goals are, you can link all these different accounts. I mean, it just really gives you a, a bird's eye view of everything that you have. Uh, this is interesting. It's a retirement fee analyzer taking a look at how much you're paying in fees inside your retirement accounts and how that affects your growth over time. Because you may not think, like, oh, I'm only paying a half percent or a percent. That adds up over time. They also offer an investment checkup looking at your tar target allocation and they look at how you are and then based off what you've told them, how they would suggest that you would invest and kind of give you some data to support that. I mean, this is all cool, man. Like this is, once again, I'm not paying for any of this. Like this is all just part of their free software. I mean, it is, I continue to be so impressed. Everything that it offers, I mean, all this data is just, it is gold. It's totally worth its weight in gold, except in this case, it's free. So is personal capital right for you? As far as the free model, the, the free tool they offer to give you a bird's eye view of your entire portfolio, I would highly suggest that everybody sign up. And if you're going to sign up, be sure to use the link in the description. But is it or is the financial planning or wealth management part of their offering, is that for you? I mean, that truly depends. I have talked to somebody I'm actually forgetting who it was, but I have talked to somebody that did take advantage and was investing with them. And what they liked about their approach was it was more comprehensive than what they had experienced with, say, like Betterment or an M1 Finance. It definitely was more wealth management. Uh, and this person, they definitely were a millionaire. They had several, several million. And I don't think they gave them all of their money. They did give them a big chunk of it because of the tax advantage strategy that they propose to them. So I have talked to somebody that has used their investment side, their wealth management side, and had nothing but good things to say for it. Now, if you're not sure, then why not Why not set up a free call? You know, when they call, answer that call, or you can actually schedule an appointment on their website if you wanna to talk to one of their personal capital wealth management people, they'll, they'll happily talk to you. I mean, take advantage. It's free. Continue to take advantage of the free stuff. It is good. It will help you achieve wealth. Um, it's some good stuff. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this review. Once again, be sure to, to subscribe. And if you've not signed up for your free personal capital account, check out the link in the description. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.